All right, what we're going to do here is we're going to put together this very simple media player focusing on this sliding volume bar. Okay, so let me just quickly here show you what exactly it's going to do. I'm sure you know how these things work. Hit the play button. You got quiet music and then much louder music until you hit the pause button there and that stops it. And you can bring the slider anywhere you want. Let's say I want it really quiet. When I hit play, it's going to automatically go right to quiet. Okay? So we're going to learn how to make that in just a short while. So first things first, file, new, to create a new document. And from the new document dialog box, simply select flash document. Hit OK. And what we've got is a default size here of 550 by 400. Come under your properties palette, hit size, and we're going to alter that size. We're going to change it. We're going to leave the width at 550, but we're going to change the height from 400 to 250. Leave the frame rate at 12. That's fine for our purposes. Okay. First thing we're going to do is create four layers. First layer, name it groove. Second layer, name it slider. Third layer, we're going to name that buttons. And fourth layer, we're going to give it the label AS for action script. So we're going to come down here to the groove layer, and we're going to grab a rectangle tool. Select this little button here, which is your corner radius, and we're going to set that to 30. And we're just going to draw a rectangle right across the entire stage. We're going to make this pretty big. Oops, just so it's nice and easy to see. Select the properties palette and round your width to the nearest pixel. In this case, I'm just going to do 520. And the height, I'm going to set that to be 8. All right. So, just like that, I'm going to zoom in on this now. And we're going to grab the fill transform tool. And we're going to select that. And I'm just going to rotate it. Make it a little bit smaller. I'm going to rotate it whoops, up here onto its side. So we have a slight gradient in there with a darker color on top. And I'm going to grab my selection tool. Hotkey for that is V. And select that. And I come up here to modify and convert that to a symbol. Now, important thing. Set the little registration point here to the center left-hand side. Okay. Select movie clip. And we're going to call this groove. Whoops caps on groove MC and hit OK and you can now see where that is if you go to window library whoops come under library right here groove MC and it's a movie clip for sure move that out of the way okay so there we've got our groove last thing I want to do that is select that groove okay I have it selected I don't know if you can see the little blue selection around it open up your properties palette and right here under the word movie clip is a little input text area and that is what's called an instance name and use the instance name when you are talking to that movie clip using action script and that's exactly what we're going to be doing here so we need to give this a name a name that we can remember so let's just call it groove underscore one okay now we're gonna lock that layer by clicking a little lock icon and move up to the slider layer on this layer we're gonna create a simple slider not nearly as complicated as the one I showed you just a moment ago Whoops. Set your corner radius to something smaller, something like 15. Okay, and you're going to see it's going to be not such a rounded rectangle. Okay, select that and come up here to modify, convert to symbol. And this one, make sure the registration point is a very center dot. And we're going to call the slider underscore master because we're going to have a movie clip or two inside of this. Double click on there and we're now editing the slider master. We're inside of that movie clip. Come over here, and we're going to change the color to a light gray. We're going to create a new layer. We're going to name this one Slider Base. And we're going to hold the Alt key if you're on PC, Option key if you're on the Mac. Click and drag this frame up onto Layer 2. And you're going to see it's going to name it Slider Base. So double-click that, and we're going to call this Slider Inset. And select that. Hit the Q key. That's your hotkey for free transform. And hold down the shift and the alt, or the shift and the option key if you're on the Mac. And scale that down a little bit. And we're going to make this just a darker gray. Okay? Matter of fact, we'll make this a gradient. And now moving off screen, but get your default black and white gradient. Hit the F key for the gradient transform tool. And we're just going to make a slight gradient in there, just like that. And now hit scene one. 
Okay, so now we have our slider. One last thing we need to do, come into the properties palette and give this an instance name. And in this case, we're going to name it slider underscore one. Close the properties palette up. You can lock that layer up. We're not going to worry about making the buttons for the time being. We're just going to worry about making this thing slide along the groove. So, first thing we have to do is come to the action script palette, or excuse me, the action script layer, and open the actions palette. And that is under window actions or the hotkey, which I like to use, F9. And this is the actions palette. First thing we need to do is we need to talk to that slider. Okay, and what we need to do is type slider underscore one. That is that movie clip. That's the instance name we gave it. Dot on press. We're using dot syntax where we put the little period in between our words. So we got slider on one, slider underscore one. Now we're saying on press equals function open and close parenthesis. Open curly bracket. That's the little bracket next to your P key. Just hold down the shift key and click that. Hit enter twice and put a closed curly bracket. And now we're talking directly to slider one. So we're going to say this dot start drag. And by the way, the capitalization I'm doing is important. With the start drag, it has to be a capital D on press. It's capital P. And now we're going to put one parenthesis and we're going to say true. And what that does is it locks the center of your mouse. When you click on it, it automatically locks it, that movie clip to the center, your, your mouse to the center of that movie clip, excuse me. And here we're going to say underscore root dot groove underscore one. Remember, that is that movie clip we made. We gave it that instance name. And copy this, because we're going to need to paste this a couple more times. Underscore X. Now hit comma, space, control V, and underscore Y. And hit comma once more, space, paste that same code, underscore root dot groove one, dot underscore x. Now, here's where you have to remember how wide you made that groove. So we're going to say plus 520, because I happen to remember that I named it, or made it 520 pixels wide. So that's very important. Comma, underscore root dot groove, underscore one, dot underscore y, once again, close parenthesis, semicolon. Okay, so if you need to review that, that's this dot start drag, open parenthesis, true to lock the center, then underscore root, the instance name for the groove, the x axis once, underscore root groove, y axis, then underscore root dot groove, x axis plus 520, so it's going to let it slide 520 along the groove, and then again with the y axis, then close it off with a close parenthesis and your semicolon. Okay, now what this is going to do, let me just hide the actions palette and move it off screen. Well, if I publish this movie, come up here to control, test movie. This now will allow me to slide my movie clip here along this slider. Okay, and you can see it's not going to let me move it up and down as much as I want to or off the ends of the slider. Okay, so that's perfect. Problem is, it never lets me let go of it. So, for that we need to make another action. And this is, hit enter, come down here and say slider underscore one dot on release. When you release your mouse button, oops, make sure you make that R a capital R, equals function, we're going to make another function here, open close parenthesis, open curly bracket, closed curly bracket, now say this dot stop drag, open and close parenthesis, semicolon. Let's test the movie once more, I just hit command enter or or that would be command return on the Mac, control enter on the PC. Now I can click and drag this, and when I let go, it stops dragging it. Okay, so that's step one. Let me close the actions palette and move it off screen real quick. One other thing I noticed is when you actually initially click on it, it moves down a little bit. So I just want to adjust it here so it won't appear to move at all when you start off with it. So I'm going to put this in wireframe mode so I can really see what's going on. Okay, and right there it looks like it's about perfect center. And it's close enough that you can hardly notice it. So I'm going to leave it at that, just for the sake of time. And what we're going to do now is we're going to put our play buttons in. The first thing we need to do is import a sound. And let's do that right now. Come up here to File, Import, Import to Library. And I have the sound here, Acoustic Fresh. That MP3, double click that, and we've just moved that into our library. First thing we want to do with that sound is right click on it and come down here to linkage.
And for the linkage properties, we want to select export for action script. And it's going to automatically check off export in first frame. The identifier, we're just going to give it a name. We're just going to call it bounce song. And make sure you remember exactly where you put capitals and if you put spaces or underscores or whatever in this. Although I don't recommend you use spaces, you just use underscores for spaces. But this is going to be copied into action script, so it has to be, you have to remember exactly what it is, because we're going to use that just like we used our instance name on our movie clip, but we're going to use it to call this sound out of the library and actually use it. So, buttons. Let's come over here, grab your poly, poly star tool, and come under here under properties, hit options. We're going to say star, or excuse me, polygon, and we're going to give it three sides. That makes a perfect triangle. Hit V for your uh, selection tool, hit Q for your free transform tool, and having a little bit of trouble here because snapping is on. If you have a bunch of snapping uh, options set here, easiest way to get them, rid of them all, if you see if I just select one, it's going to take me completely out of the menu. i got to go back in. Just come under here to edit snapping and uncheck or check the ones you want on or off. And you can even save that as default. And that takes that problem away. So now I can just hit Q, level this thing out as best I can. Okay, and here's our play button. We're going to scale it down, obviously, a bit. Just make a simple button. And then grab the rectangle tool, and we're going to make a simple stop button, which is still rounded. Grab the rectangle tool, select corner radius, and put in zero points for your corner radius. So you get a perfect square, just like that. And we're just going to give this the color red. And we're going to give the play button the simple color green. And... Now we're going to convert this to a symbol, hit modify, I've got the play button selected, convert to symbol, convert this to a button symbol, just leave the registration in the center, it's really ir irrelevant here, don't worry about it, we're going to call this play.btn, this, na this name doesn't matter, we're going to convert the stop button to a symbol as well, we're going to call this stop btn, okay, and now we're going to give these both instance names, grab the properties palette and just call this play, on, whoops, underscore btn and we're going to select this and call this stop underscore btn so those now can be communicated to with action script so what we need to do next is get this play button working click the action script frame and hit f9 which is your actions palette okay and we're gonna drop in some actions for that play button remember we called it play underscore btn so we went to say dot on release Oops. <laughs> equals function. We're going to make another function. Open and close parenthesis. Open curly bracket. Close curly bracket. And now for the center, we need to attach a new sound. We're going to call this my song. Okay. We're going to say equals new space capital S for sound. Open and close parentheses and semicolon. And now we're going to say my song dot Attach, oops. Attach sound, there we go. <laughs> and now is where that name, that linkage name, right click on Acoustic Fresh, hit linkage. We named it Bounce Song. And to be safe, I'll just copy it from there, hit OK. Come right over here. Notice I put a quotation mark. Command or Control V to paste it. Put a close quote and your close parenthesis and your semicolon. And now we need to say my song dot start, and we're going to set the seconds of off start, offset seconds. I mean, you can see here it's a seconds offset, um, which is the time between clicking the button and the sound actually starting, and the amount of times it loops. So we'll just say 50, so pretty well loops indefinitely, unless you're sitting there listening to it uh, for a very long time. Okay, so here's the play button. Now, let's move that out of the way. Let's just test it real quick, and click play. It works. That's good. It goes to our library, gets the sound, and plays it. It's exactly what we wanted. Okay, so next thing we need to do is program the stop button to stop. So come here to Window, Actions. And if you recall, we named that stop underscore btn. And we're going to say on release for this equals function, open and close parentheses, open curly bracket, move down two lines, make a close curly bracket, and in here all we're going to type is simply stop all with a capital A, sounds with a capital S, open and close parenthesis, semicolon.
Okay. So let me move my actions palette off screen. Let's test this again. Command, return, or control, enter if you're on a PC. And we're going to hit the play button. And you can see the stop button works. So there's a very simple stop button. And now we need to make the volume change when you drag the slider around. This is where it gets a little tricky. But have no fear. We will figure it out. Come right down here. And we're going to type slider underscore one. Remember, that's what we named our slider. Dot on mouse move equals function. Open and close parenthesis. Open curly bracket. Closed curly bracket. Go into there and type, let's call this new point. Okay. Equals new spacebar object with a capital O. Just like before we created the new sound, we are creating a new object here. Semicolon. Now we're going to say new point dot x equals this dot underscore x. All right. And we're going to do the same thing right down here. We're just going to say new point dot y equals this dot underscore y. Just like that. Don't worry about semicolons on the end of those lines of code. And one last thing we're going to do here is type underscore root dot groove. This is that groove that we made before. So it's going to be groove underscore one, I believe we called it. I already forget. And we're going to say dot global. It's global with lowercase g, capital T for two. So we have global two local with a capital L. And now we have to tell it what to make, what to convert from global to local. And that point we just called new point. Okay. And put a semicolon at the end of that. And what this has done so far is uh, it's converting that point from global to local. And we need to do one last thing here, and that is to actually set this slider to change the volume. We want the vo with a slider to set the volume. So we're going to do that right here with this line of code. Underscore root dot, what do we call that? My song was the name of our song variable or song label there. And we're going to say dot set volume. Okay, it's a command inside of Flash. And here we're going to say negative one times, that's the asterisk I'm using there for times, new point, okay, dot x. Then we're going to put our close parenthesis and semicolon. And we can look over this text, uh, this code again, okay, if you like. And this is slider one dot on mouse move equals function, open and close parentheses, open curly brace, new point equals new space object with a capital O, parentheses, semicolon, new point dot x equals this dot underscore x, new point dot y equals this dot underscore y. And then our global to local command right there, and our other set volume command right here. So I'm going to collapse the actions palette and move it off screen, and we're going to test this here. Control enter for those of us on PC, and command return for those of us on Mac. All right, I'm going to hit play, and it sets the volume, and it definitely gets louder there. So I'm going to set it here about the middle, and we'll try that. And you can see it goes completely silent or very loud. And that's it. That's a basic sound slider, and uh, with the added option of having your play and stop buttons, which are very helpful, because usually when you're using a sound slider, you have some sort of an MP3 or a media player. Um, so, I hope you learned something from this one, and I hope you'll go check the site out, uh, www.tutvid.com. That's T-U-T-V-I-D.com. And uh, thanks for watching.